Hey boys and girls, it's Mrs. Walker. Today for our fluency activity, we are going to actually be doing three activities in one. Yeah, not just one, not just two, but three different activities um, that are going to help us review our skills that we've learned in previous lessons and it's going to help prepare us for today's lesson as well. So let's jump in and get started with our learning goals. So our first learning goal says I can skip count by sixes, sevens, eights, and nines. Our second learning goal says I can multiply by different units. So that means just instead of multi multiplying by like two times three, we might do two tens times three. That's just different units. Then we're going to write in parentheses. So I can write in parentheses to solve multipl a multiplication equation. So that just means we're going back to using those parentheses and placing them to wherever we find easiest to be able to solve the multiplication problem. So now we're gonna jump in and get started with our actual fluency activities. So we're gonna do some skip counting. We're gonna skip count together. Thumbs up means we're counting up. Remember the fist means stop. And then the thumbs down means we're going to count down, okay? So first we're gonna start by counting by sixes to 60, okay? So here we go, we're counting up. Six, 12, you can count with me. Six, 12, 18. 24, 30, 36, 42, 48, 54, and 60. So we're stopping. Now we're going to count down. Ready? 54, 48, 42, 36, 30, 24, 18. Stop. Now we're going to go up from 18. So 18, 24, 30, 36, 42, 48, 54, 60. All right, rock on. Awesome job with that one, friends. Now we're going to move on to counting by sevens to 70. Okay, here we go. Counting up. 7, 14, 21, 28, 35, 42, 49, 56, 63, 70. Stop. Counting down. Here we go. Ready? 70, 63, 56, 49, 42, 35, 28, 21. Stop. Now we're going to count back up. So 21, 28, 35, 42, 49, 56, 63, 70. Okay, great job with that one, friends. Now we're going to count by 8 to 80. Here we go. Counting up. 8, 16, 24, 32, 40, 48, 56, 64, 72, 80. Stop. Counting down. 72, 64, 56, 48. 40, 32, stop. So now we're going to count up. So 32, 40, 48, 56, 64, 70, 72, 80. Stop. Rock on, friends. Good job with that one. Now we're going to skip count by nines to 90. Here we go. We're going to count up. Nine. 18, 27, 36, 45, 54, 63, 72, 81, and 90. Stop. Now we're counting down. So we're at 90, 81, 72, 63, 54, 45, 36. Stop. Now we're going to count down. Oh, sorry, we just did counting down. Now we're going to count up. So we're at 36. So 36, 45, 54, 63, 72, 81, and 90. Good job, friends. You did a great job. Skip counting by sixes, sevens, eights, and nines. Now we're going to move into multiplying by different units. So don't let that fool you. You guys have all talked about different forms of numbers. Remember how we've talked about like the um, standard form, which is just like two times three. And then we've talked a little bit about um, unit form, which is like two ones times three 
equals six months. So So I know you guys are going to be able to do great with that. So you're going to be given a multiplication equation. You're going to say or write the equation in unit form. And then you'll say or write the equation in standard form. So let's do an example together. So we have 2 times 3. So the unit form of that is 2 ones times 3 equals 6 ones. So the standard form of that is just 2 times 3 equals 6. Okay, so unit form is where you're actually bringing in the unit that each number is in. And standard form means you take out the units. Okay, so here we go. 2 tens times 3. So this is very similar to what we just did, but now it's telling us that it's the units, that it's in tens this time. Okay, so the unit form is 2 tens times 3 is 6 tens. So you're really just doing 2 times 3, but it's actually the t in the tens unit, so 6 tens. So in standard form, that's going to be 2 tens, which is 20 times 3 equals 60. See the difference between the unit form and the standard form? Okay, so the unit form is telling us it's not just 2 anymore, it's 2 tens. And 2 tens equals 20. Okay? And when you do 2 tens times 3, you get 6 tens. Well, look, friends, 6 tens is the same as 60. Okay? All right, so here we go. So 4 times 2. The unit form is 4 ones because we didn't label it as anything else. So if you're not labeling it as anything else, it's just ones. So 4 ones times 2 is 8 ones. Then my standard form is 4 times 2 equals 8. Okay, those ones are a little bit easier when they're ones. When they get into the tens, it's a little bit trickier. So let's look at this problem. In remember, we're going to do 4 times 2, but this time we're doing 4 tens times 2. Okay, so the unit form of 4 tens times 2 is 4 tens times 2 equals 8 tens, because I know that 4 times 2 is 8, but it's in the unit of tens. So the standard form, if I have 4 tens, that's going to be 40. So 40 times 2 gives me those 8 tens, which is 80. Okay. Now you guys are going to try this one. So 5 times 3. What's the unit form of 5 times 3? Five ones times three ones equals 15 ones, okay? Because it doesn't list anything other than just, um, it doesn't list as tens or hundreds or anything like that. It's just the ones. So now standard form of this is going to be just five times three equals 15. Okay, so now we're gonna take these same numbers that we just used with five and three, but now we're gonna be using tens. So five tens times three. So the unit form of 5 tens times 3 is 5 tens times 3 equals 15 tens. Okay, awesome job. What's the standard form? Five tens is 50, so 50 times 3 is 150. Awesome job, friends. Now, look here too, if this was a little bit harder to do 50 times 3, the way that I did it was 50 plus 50, that's two 50s, which is 100, and then plus 50 more is 150. But you could also look up here, friends, in your unit form and say, oh, wow, 15 tens, well, I know that 10 tens make 100, and then 5 tens are left over, and that's 50, so 150. So there's another way that you could solve that problem. Okay, so great job with that. Now we're going to talk about how we can use our parentheses to be able to help us solve a problem. So we're going to give it, be given a multiplication equation. You're going to write in the parentheses to solve, and we're going to do an example together. So here I have 5 times 4 equals 2 times 2 times 5. Now you want to solve the part of the problem that only has two parts to it, or two factors. 
So I know that 5 times 4 is 20. So now I need to put my parentheses in to be able to solve for 20. So I could put my parentheses around the first two numbers or I could put them around the second two numbers. So let's go to the first problem. So 2 times 2 is what, friends? It's 4. So 4 times 5 is 20. Now if I go to my second problem, I have 2 times 2 times 5 in parentheses. So I have to do my parentheses first, which is 2 times 5 is 10, times 2 more is 20. So look at that, friends. In this, you're going to be able to put your parentheses around the first two numbers or the second two numbers and still get the same product. But what I want you to think about here is when you did 2 times 2, it gave you 4. And 4 times 5 is 20. So that's solving it the same way they did up in the top part of the problem. Or maybe you might want to be doing things where you're doubling those. Because when you have this 2 here, so it's the 2 times 5 is 10, and then you're just doubling it when you're multiplying it by 2. So in this problem, or in these practice problems, it's really up to you on how you want to put the parentheses in to be able to solve whatever's easiest for you to solve with those parentheses. Okay? So let's look at another example. I have 6 times 4 equals 6 times 2 times 2. So you can solve this any way you want to. You can put your parentheses around the first two problems or the second two problems. But first, what you want to look at is what 6 times 4 6 times 4 is 24, okay? So now you can do the first two or the second two, and you can solve. So 6 times 2 is 12, and 12 times 2 is 24. Or you could solve it with the parentheses on the left, on the right-hand side, sorry. 2 times 2 is 4, and 6 times 4 is 24. So whichever way you want to use the parentheses, that's absolutely up to you. So go ahead and solve this problem, friends. Go ahead and solve it using whichever way you would like and write it on your dry erase board. Okay, if you're ready to go over it, let's talk about it. If not, click pause so you can have more time. So I did six times six is 36. Then I could put my parentheses around the first two or the second two. If I do it around the first two, I have to do six times two first, which is 12 and 12 times three is 36. So that's a little bit larger of a problem. Then I can do it in the second problem, which is two times three, which I know is six, and six times six is 36. So whichever way you want is absolutely fine. All right, so go ahead and pause the video, try this one, write out which way you're going to solve it, and then click play when you're ready to go over it together. Okay, here we go. So first start with seven times four, because that's where you know two of the factors. So seven times four is 28. Then you can put your parentheses around the first two or the second two sets of numbers. Find the product of two times two, which is four. So four times seven is 28. Or you could solve it with the parentheses around the second two numbers, which is two times seven, 14, and 14 times two, or sorry, two times 14, is 28. So I wonder which way you solved it. <laughs> All right, so two thumbs up to you guys for being able to skip count, multiply it by different forms, and write in the parentheses to solve multiplication problems. You guys did a great job with three different fluency activities today. So pat yourself on the back for that. I'm very proud of you. So please head back on over to the module to see what you need to complete next. And I hope you guys have a great rest of your day. Bye, friends. <music>